Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with nine steps to help you kill Rogers block. If you want to be a creator, it's going to happen. And if you want to be a successful creator, you need to learn how to spank Rogers block in the ass. The number one way to fend off Rogers block is to be prepared. That's what I call Rogers prep. Many times, this is what sometimes you people do. They'll sit down, they'll have a concept, there's something that they want to talk about, and they'll prep and write at the same time, which is really, really time consuming and highly inefficient. If you have a topic, let's just going to say you're going to write about uh, fornicating rabbits. But what you would do, and this isn't the research of fornicating rabbits, this is the writer's prep of fornicating rabbits. You're right at the top of your paper, fornicating rabbits. And then you would go, what am I going to talk about? And you go, point one, fornicating rabbits are highly, have a high sex drive, fornicate, you know, that's point one, then point two, what to do about fornicating rabbits. And you would write these one, two, three, four, five, six highlight points and then just maybe one line of what you're going to talk about under that just that alone will help you write so much faster so that's what i mean by writer's prep now this trick to ending writer's block is some you know you might know about you might not but listen to classical music or instrumentals some music that really inspires you something that you really like it's been proving that classical music or Baroque music will open up centers of your brain to help you be more creative. It'll help you learn better. Matter of fact, I don't have that book here, but essentially music is like an aid to study and writing. Once again, instrumental or Baroque classic music. This is a very big big thing for me. Let's just say you've tried the classical music, you've tried writer's prep, and you're still blocked. Now this is something that I don't do every day, but it's something I had, I would do for a long time. And whenever I need it, I'll pull it out of the bag. And that's meditation. If you learn how to meditate, and once again, for all you religious folks who are just like, oh, I can't meditate because you're going to send me to hell. No, no, not that. Think of meditation as formatting your brain, clearing out stuff, focusing your thoughts. It doesn't have to, you don't have to assume the pose. You don't have to have a mantra. You just have to pick one form of meditation, five to 10 minutes before you write, and you'll be in a better mental space to write and to create and to perform. I'll give you an example. When I started meditating and there was this book, it was another book. It was really a magazine by the name of UT Reader. And there was this article about this monk, this Buddhist monk, who would, you know, monks meditate. And he would meditate and he would write for six, seven, eight hours. And I was just really, really fascinated by that. So I started meditating based on that article and it worked. I wasn't writing six or seven hours, but I never, ever got writer's block. So if I've ever had a point where I might be stuck, I'll just sit down five, 10 minutes, go into my meditative folds, and then boom, I can write all day. It's an amazing thing. And there's other scientifically proven benefits to meditation. This is a very big, big thing for me. Let's just say you've tried the classical music, you've tried writer's prep, and you're still blocked. Now, this is something that I don't do every day, but it's something I had, I would do for, a long time and whenever I need it I'll pull it out of the bag and that's meditation if you learn how to meditate and once again for all you religious folks who are just like oh I can't meditate because you're going to send me to hell no no not that think of meditation as formatting your brain clearing out stuff focusing your thoughts it doesn't have to you don't have to assume the pose you don't have to have a mantra you just have to pick one form of meditation five to 10 minutes before you write and you'll be in a better mental space to write and to create and to perform. I'll give you an example. When I started meditating and there was this book, it was another book. It was really a magazine by the name of UT Reader. And there was this article about this monk, this Buddhist monk who 
would, you know, monks meditate, and he would meditate, and he would write for six, seven, eight hours, and I was just really, really fascinated by that. So I started meditating based on that article, and it worked. I wasn't writing six or seven hours, but I never, ever got writer's block. So if I've ever had a point where I might be stuck, I'll just sit down, five, ten minutes, go into my meditative folds, and then boom, I can write all day. It's an amazing thing. And there's other scientifically proven benefits to meditation. This is another way to stimulate your creative process. And it's doodling. I know it sounds crazy. You just take a sheet of paper and just start drawing all kinds of shit. Whatever. Whatever makes you happy. Whatever makes you, you know, whatever gets you off. You could draw stick figures. You could draw trees. If you just sit there and just fill up the page with doodles of little drawings, words, whatever. That, once again, activates the creative process in your brain. Now, for many of you that didn't know, years and years ago, I was an artist. I used to paint, sculpt, uh, blow stuff up in the can, and I had a lot of fun with that. And part of your artistic brain is you'll be working on a project, you'll be creating a piece of art, you'll be working on a piece of music, you'll be working on say a written piece and you'll get into that space where it just flows and doodling and meditation can help you get there so that's another way for you to jog yourself into writing when you want to write not writing when you feel amused because i had a friend who lost a writing contract a book contract because she only wrote when the muse was present but the contract stated you need to finish that book by a certain date and she didn't, so she had to get her money back. Yeah, pretty damn bad. Another thing that can help you write, and this is just fun, is what I call the 30 minute gambit. Say you're stuck, and you have to write this scientific piece, right? But you don't really feel like it. Well, write a dirty story for 30 minutes, write an angry letter for 30 minutes, like say someone pissed you off, right? Sit there and tell them exactly how you feel about them in the letter. Just write all of that bullshit out there. Do not give them the letter. You know, some of you will, but this is just to get your, your mind working. Because I had some stuff on my mind, right? And I wrote it out. And I did 3,900 words in one hour typing. That's how pissed off I was. And it was just coming out and coming out and coming out and coming out. So that's an exercise to get you in that writing space. So just take 30 minutes, angry letter, dirty story, uh, or a love letter, or something happy. Anything to move you from where you are to where you want to be in terms of writing. Another way for you to be instantly creative is to have a dedicated writing space. A place that you can sit down and instantly create. It doesn't have to be that expensive. I'll tell you about my writing space, my setup for the first five years I was doing this. It was a folding table, like a picnic table, except it folded in the middle. I got it from Walmart and I had a chair I got at a garage sale. Maybe 40 bucks is what I spent on this. I had my computers on it I, and I created a lot of videos, a lot of editing. So it doesn't have to be expensive and you don't have to have a home office, but the home office is good if you can swing it. And just sit there. So this is what happens to people who don't have a dedicated writing space. Each time they sit down to write, they have to mentally set up to write. So that's five to 30 minutes for some people or five minutes to an hour for some people just getting in that mode. Whereas if you have a dedicated space that you could just sit, instantly turn on the creativity and begin to work, you will be more efficient. You'll put out more work and you'll save time. Definitely something worth investing in. This is another way for you to never have writer's block again. Write every day. Now, wait, 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 wait. Before we get into this, like, oh, I can't write. Yes, you can. When I say write every day, if you write five to 30 minutes a day, that will build an incredible habit and it will help you be always creative. Your, your creative stuff will always be on because writing is a habit and it's a practice and it's a craft. This is things you develop. I had, like I said, I don't know if I said it in one of the steps, but I'm gonna say it again just for redundancy. I had a friend who lost a big writing contract 
for a book deal because she couldn't finish the book because she was one of those people that had to write on the muse. And I was just like, are you serious? Are you crazy? It's, it's a habit. Like, I'll give you an example. When I wrote my first book, I was writing maybe 500 words a day. Now, wait for it, wait for it. It was taking me 68 hours because of all these things that I'm telling you and these tips to prevent writer's block to help you be more efficient. I wasn't doing that. I would just sit there and brute force, I'm gonna write. And there was the headaches, and there was the tension, there was all these distractions because I wasn't set up. But once I start to set up, then the writing got much faster, much, much faster because it, like I said, I was doing 500 words in a day, six to eight hours of sitting there, going over stuff, taking stuff out, rewrite, doing all of this stuff. Whereas now I can sit down and do a thousand words in 30 minutes because now I have a format, I have a plan, I have space, I have a writing posture, and I have all of these elements and uh, resources that I can use to always be able to write when I want to write. Because if you're going to have a blog or you're going to be any kind of content creator, there's going to be shitty days. There's going to be days you don't feel like writing. There's going to be days that you might be sick, but you have a project that you have to put out. And that's going to be the difference between being successful by developing these habits and not being successful. It is just that black and white. One thing about reading every day, make sure that you read across a broad spectrum of topics. If you're writing about SEO, it would help you to read poetry. It would help you to read the old classic, you know, the old dead white guys, because it's going to give you a different perspective. Because when you first start your writing career, your first one or two years is going to be all about you. And what I mean is you're going to regurgitate all of this stuff that you've been thinking about, that you want to put out. And once you get that out, and then you're going to need to read consistently to have more stuff to make your, your writing fresh. So just a tip from me to you. All right. So with that, oh, how to use this if you're still here. There's going to be an annotation in either a green or red that you could click on for deals. Or it'll be the little eye. It'll be here, here, because they move it sometimes. But you have to put your finger, if you're on mobile, on the screen to see it. Or if you're on desktop, it's going to pop out. Or if you want to see it at all times, put your cursor over the screen of the video and you'll see it. All right? All right. Oh, yeah. There was something I was going to say. Well, I'll just save it for the next video. Another way for you to never experience writer's block is to read every day. Once again, it can be five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. See, this is the thing that many people seem to underestimate is there's this, there's this thing of brute force or these huge jumps that you're going to read for eight hours a day, every day, just, you know, you're going hard like a ninja, just this beast mode, right? Well, Here's something that I figured out a long time ago. There was a point where I had a lot of stuff going on and I was only reading about 10 minutes a day and I was writing about 30 minutes a day. But since I was consistent and this wasn't seven days a week, this was about five, four to five days a week. Just that consistency. If you write four to five, if you write three to five days a week, take your weekends off you will have such a strong writing habit and voice because you consistently practice it. That's the thing with reading every day. If you just, if you took a book and you read the book five minutes, 10 minutes every day, eventually you will finish that book. More than likely, if you did that consistently, you probably finish two or three books a month. What happens is people want to do the big block, the thing is like, hey, I put in a lot of time, that whole big thing. But it's little things and it's consistency that will make you successful. So those are your nine steps to killing writer's block. All right. And if you want more, be sure to go below the video. Get on my email list because I do training one to three times a week about various things. You have to be on the list to know what's coming down. And if you're ready to take that next leap, check out the paid blogger. It is a different kind of blogging course and it's a different kind of blogging platform because it's based upon what I did in 2009 to start my digital empire. All right, this is Glendon and I'll see you in the next session. 
Hey, this is Glendon Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu and ElectricKungFu.com. What we're going to talk about today is writer's block. You're trying to write a blog, you're trying to create content, there's just nothing there. I'm going to give you nine steps of things that I do to help me fend off writer's block.